Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, New York by Night. We continue our story about four fledgling vampires of the Camarilla, struggling to find their place amid the mysteries of the all-night society of the Big Apple with this Season 2, Episode 3, Festivals of Babylon. Let's meet our festive vampires. Hello, I'm Nora Ibrahim, and I play Kalita the Ventru. Hey, I'm Cynthia Marie. I play uh, Coco the Little Sombra. Hi, I'm Xander Genre, playing Braun the Nosferatu. Hi, I'm Michelle and Bradley, and I'm playing Kim the Toreador. Everybody does look very festive. I think you might be on your way to someplace special tonight. Before we get to that special place, let's thank a few special people. We're going to thank Black Magic Design for the cameras that help us come to you tonight in unliving color. We're going to thank Dogmite Games for this beautiful New York by Night Storyteller screen. Hello, screen. It's nice to get to know you. And we're going to thank Renegade Game Studios, our official Vampire the Masquerade and World of Darkness tabletop RPG publishing partner who makes sure that we have all the tabletop supplies we need, including the dice that track our hunger. By way of prologue tonight, let's consider boons. One kindred's promise to another is known as a boon. In some domains, boons operate like credit. A vampire must owe a boon in order for another to extend one to them in return. You must be proven to be trustworthy before you can be trusted. In other domains, the opposite is true. The more debts a kindred owes, the less capable of repaying those boons they seem until no one will help them. The one universal truth among all domains, however, is that a boon is a boon, and there is no way to get out of it other than to satisfy it or have it excused by the giver. Kindred must exercise care because kindred who call in unearned favors from other vampires often find their existences dictated by the obligations that they have incurred. In exchange for whatever tokens of help that they requested, they become a puppet of those who came to their aid. And kindred society is a Byzantine knot of favors owed, loyalty sworn, debts repaid, and promises broken. And this practice of prestation binds every kindred, from the highest prince to the lowliest fledgling. And indeed, the system of prestation the giving of favors is sometimes the only way that the youngest kindred can get one over on their elders. With this firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. In this world of darkness, 
The fledgling vampires, the youngest kindred, bear the weight of all those who are above them. They are the numerous, the expendable. The Ancilla influence them, and so do the elders through the Ancilla. Even the neonates have more power. Gravity here, then, is the unfair tyrant. Blood flows up, and authority flows down. It isn't fair. It isn't just. But it's always true. So, fledglings form coteries. The better to survive the earliest and these most difficult and unkind of nights. Some of these groups form organically for no reasons other than simple survival. It's just easier to get by in this all-night society when you can rely on other kindred of even minimal trustworthiness. Other coteries are formed deliberately by outside forces, usually for very specific reasons. Sometimes they know those reasons, see them clearly, perceive the wheels within wheels. But sometimes they realize only later what should have been obvious, that they were serving some unseen or greater purpose. Kim. During the day, while the sun was in the sky, while the mortals of New York City went about their lives, while they shopped, while they lived, while they ate, while they fought, while they loved, you slept, dead, as it were, to the world. When you woke up tonight, you found yourself with some time before you were required to meet the coterie, collect Lizzie, and take her home. How did you spend this time? When I wake, I get dressed. I go to a large portrait in the center of my living room. It's very sparsely decorated, but very luxurious items. There's a large portrait of an angel, and hmm. I reach behind it unclick a lock and swing it open. A hidden compartment. This portrait is the size of a person, maybe five, six feet tall. Huge. When it opens, you see lots of shelves. Some of those shelves are full of guns, swords, daggers, ammunition. And then about five of those shelves are full of rings, some jewelry, little ticket stubs, Memories of people. Personal mementos. But they're not mine. I take out a few weapons, load them into my harness, <sighs> stretch, and I get ready for my day. And your day is, of course, everyone else's night. That's right. I'm still getting used to it. Braun. Yeah. When sun sets and your eyelids flutter open and you are awake, conscious again, with no knowledge of how the day passed while you slept, what do you do this evening? How do you spend the time? Braun's got a small little compartment closet that he keeps most of his stuff in. And you can see that there are several wraps for arms, a few t-shirts, some hats, that sort of thing, and a cracked mirror that's over in the corner. Braun takes some time examining some of the manifestations of his curse. He pauses for a moment with the hat and keeps it on, but decides today we don't need the wraps. They're gonna see me. They're gonna see me. I'll get off of the ferry and head over. And Coco, 
When your night begins. When you stir after a long day's dreamless sleep. How do you get ready? What do you do? I immediately call out from my tiny little closet. Lords! Miss? What time is it? It's, it's early. It's early still. Okay. Um, Everything I, is ready for you. I need, great. How, how's the company? It's in excellent shape, just as it was last night. Profits are rising. The board is happy. Good. Good. Oh, where's, where's my bag? It's right here. Shall I prepare you? Please. She sets the bag next to you and pulls out lipstick, mascara, eyeshadow. And she begins, as she does every night, to make your face. Mm -hmm. Now, Coco, you took a great deal of temporary willpower damage the night before. In fact, you damaged your willpower to its very limit. It's a new night. You can again rely on the confidence that is your blood right through your clan. Erase all the superficial willpower damage and begin again with a fresh track tonight. Kalita, your night begins how? Kalita wakes uh, in her own art gallery in Hell's Kitchen and contacts Rafferty to request a private meeting. Hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, my dear. Come early. And so Wilcox will drive her to meet at their usual usual location. At the usual spot. He's there waiting for you. This evening he has on a beautiful designer sweater. All midnight blue shot through with gold thread. Mm. Mm, always hungry. I thought it'd be cute for where we're going. Always better to uh, look like you belong somewhere. It's easier to sway people in the way that you need to. I'll be curious to know your impressions and how capably you sway them. You look very dapper this evening. Thank you very much. I have some special business to attend to later. Mm. I wanted to ask you, it's privately. I've never stopped you before, so <laughs> not now. I wanted to ask you privately what you thought of this coterie so far. It has potential. One. It has great potential. Very, very different kindred individuals with very, very different skills and talents, ambitions. Concerns? Hmm. Well, the obvious, Mr. Braun is, seems to be a bit of a hothead, but that may be tempered with time, and it is good to have a blunt instrument. Agreed. He's a little rough around the edges, but I think he has a lot of potential. He'll do, at least for now. Miss Kiem is different than what I expected. I knew her sire very briefly many years ago and agreed to look after her up to a point, hmm. should anything happen to him. And apparently it has. He's not been seen in some time, so. Interesting. Here she is. Hmm. And I cannot help but feel, of course, as is true with so many kindred, that there is much more to her than meets the eye. I'm still trying to read her. Do dig a little, won't you? I will. And as for Miss Coco, well, you know their problems. Hmm. The La Sombra are not given welcome easily or lightly. I still do not know if it is wise for the prince to permit them in the city. 
But that's not for me to say or to decide. Fair. Remember that they are formidable. They possess powers unfamiliar to you. And you can't trust her. No. Good to know. There was one last thing. What was that? I'm not satisfied with a B as a grade. And Are you not now? No. Well, you always were a good student. Thank my you. very best. Unlike some, I could mention. Um, well, as we are earning some extra credit tonight, mm -hmm. um, I would also like to know if there's any other extracurricular activities I personally can attend to, mm -hmm. discreetly between us, of course. I mentioned the matter of my interests in the Bronx. Mm. Richter is not specifically involved in my endeavors, but he knows about some of them and has agreed to provide certain kinds of support. You may meet various kindred in his club. It's very popular among the Anarchs. Mm. I would be very curious to know if certain faces are there this evening and what you think of them. Anyone uh, in particular? Mm. If you happen to see Margot Walker, make a point of making her acquaintance. I will. And now we have only to wait for the rest of your coterie to arrive. I let them know that I was on my way. They'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. One more thing. Richter's played this game a while. He may offer you prestation, favors for favors. Mm -hmm. I leave it to your best judgment to decide whether to accept. Just don't incur a debt you can't pay. Fair. Do you, is this because of trust or is this because of the returns hmm. might be a little more than what I'm willing to give? It's because the situation between the Camarilla and the Anarchs is very unstable at this time. The death of their Baron is creating some ripples that we didn't anticipate. I don't think this twerk fellow is up to the task. Mm. He seems more interested in talk than action. But there are anarchs who might take advantage of the situation and do something stupid. And I don't really know on which side Richter would fall. Okay. If he chooses to support twerk fully, he could be a problem. I'd rather he didn't. Noted. Any other preparations that I should know about before we go? Uh, Coco. Definitely wanted to resolve uh, the conversation with my sire. Do you want to meet him in person? I would love to meet him in person. Well, you know where to find him. The boat is at the dock where it usually is. He is, as ever, very pleased to see you. Como estas? Better now. Good. Better now that you are here. <laughs> so, are you no longer in trouble? No longer in trouble. For now. This uh, group seems to find itself in trouble a bit. So I am doing my best to hide where I need to hide and be present when I need to be present. I expect you to win. I expect you to achieve. I expect you to prevail. That's why I chose you. I shall do that. 
Speaking of prevailing, I did come with the information about uh, the kindred I had told you on the phone earlier. Yes. It seems uh, they are a kindred clan called the Ravenos. Oh, that is all we need. Vagabonds, nomads, charlatans. Their clan suffered a, a great catastrophe some decades ago. They were nearly wiped out to a single kindred. Hmm. Frankly, I thought they were all gone. But unfortunately, there are still a few left. Interesting, because the uh, the the person that I was uh, working with or talking to, I seem to have said about the same thing about me. I had not seen uh, my power f for some time. The Ravnos told you this? See. Si. Hmm. Perhaps he remembers our wilder nights when we ran with a different crowd. You know. Why don't we run with them now? They chose a different path. I have no interest in being part of a vampire death cult. I see. The purpose has changed. So have we. Understood. Better to rule in heaven or rule in hell. I'll take rule in hell. I agree. In this Rafferty, um, what is it that you owe him? Why is he being, uh, como se dice, uh, he is being um, pleasant with me? Hmm. You know our situation. See? Si. We are here on the prince's good graces, on her sufferance. Probation, I think. Cannot afford mistakes. I owed Rafferty from a favor he did for me when I first came here. Hmm. He made it possible for me to escape the attention of the Scourge. Oh. In exchange for which, I have agreed to let him be your entree into the Ivory Tower. You will have more success with him vouching for you than for me. Yes, I see. Uh, I have to admit, uh, the first mission that we did, he gave us a, a B. A, a B? A B. A B? Yes. Uh, On a scale, there is a mm, A, B, C, D. Uh, entiendo. Okay. Well, that's very disappointing. I know. I but it wasn't do my fault. What are you doing tonight? Oi. It's a una brutal mission. It's uh, we are going to the Bronx. <laughs> enjoy. I don't think I will. I know my parents uh, have been there before and didn't enjoy it very much, so I... Mm. Well, I expect you to get an A on this one. I will do my best. I know. Go carefully, though. I shall. You can't trust any of these. I won't. Thank you for your time. Come see me after. But of course. Adios. Buena suerte. Brian, any other preparations I need to know about? I am taking my silver knuckle dusters. Silver knuckle dusters? They're in my pocket. Hmm. Just in case. Just in case. And Kiem, you mentioned armaments. You are bringing what? Your knife? I have two gold daggers stashed in my harness. Gold daggers. A small gun uh, along my thigh and a small purse for money should we need it. Before I head over to Rafferty's I, I sit quietly in a bar full of people humans, mortals staring at hands Faces, noses, enjoying myself in my own way. And then I head over.
You've been asked to come to the parking garage again. You know the way. Kalita is there first, along with Rafferty. A security detail, and Lizzie. Mm. She's got some new clothes. This is a couture gown, Jessica McClintock, and it's already shredded. It's in tatters. Hey, Lizzie, uh, I like your dress. Thank you. I, I fixed it myself. Ah, that was you. Oh, that's good, good right? Uh, great statement. Very you. I like it this way. It's a work of art. Thank you. I like your shirt. I'm always hungry, too. Thank you. You sure that's not a masquerade breach? Uh, just kidding. I mean, that's not going to mean anything to everybody. So. All right, then. Give us the details uh, so that we can get the good grade. That's all I'm concerned about. Well, pupil, hmm. pay attention. All right. You're going to take Lizzie into the South Bronx. The driver will know the way. You're going to a nightclub that calls itself The Cage. Very prosaic, I'm sure. Yeah. When you get there, you're going to escort Lizzie inside. And you're going to talk to the kindred who owns the club. Richter. He's a bruja with all that that entails. So, That's he's got. Good. What do they do? He's got a temper. Ah, uh, I can relate. You're expected. I seriously doubt anyone there will harm you. Although they might get in your faces. Camarilla isn't exactly welcome in Anarch territory. But this will be a good lesson for you to see how the other half lives, or unlives, in this particular instance. You're going to see a different slice of unlife tonight. That's really the entire assignment. Okay. No fighting. I have no idea what you will be called upon to do there. See, when we're vague like this, mistakes get made, so I'm just making sure we don't like the Anox. We are the Camarilla. Punch, punch, punch. It's all good. Maybe. Maybe. We Maybe. bring her back. Right, 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 right. That's mission number one. We don't punch. As I said, I can't tell what you'll be called upon to do. This kind of free radical environment could create any set of circumstances, you will have to use your best judgment. Keeping in mind the goals of the Camarilla, my interests, and your own ambitions. And you would like us to talk to this Richter on your behalf for... Any message? Any reason? <laughs> you mentioned no, the... I have no message for Richter. I'm sure he'll do all the talking. Uh -huh. hmm. Just do as I've asked. Consider it done. Ready, my dear? Yes. Well then, the night is wasting. Off you go. Shall we? Yeah. So, let's move our scene now. We're in the South Bronx. We got here by taking the FDR Drive to Willis Avenue Bridge to the Bruckner Expressway, and then we exited the neighborhood of Hunts Point. Most of this neighborhood, as you drive through it, you notice is factories and warehouses and light industry. Very few residences. Glass, auto parts, manufacturing, not many people come down here at night, not even to walk along the shore of the East River that skirts the entire neighborhood. 
and across that dark stretch of water you can see the cold lights of Rikers Island with its infamous penitentiary. And beyond that, the lights of the borough of Queens. And then you're pulling into a wide gravel parking lot next to the cage, a nightclub built in the shell of a decommissioned cement factory. Three stories of brick and concrete and graffiti and attitude. The exterior is a latticework of fire escapes and metal catwalks that connect it to the old cement making machinery that looms over the river shore nearby like rusting metal skeletons. There are people here in the parking lot, milling around outside the entrance to the club, smoking, drinking, talking, laughing. Many of them are standing under a large poster-sized banner advertising tonight's band, Bronx Cheer. Your town car attracts attention as Wilcox pulls up to the front doors. Groups of people move away from the building and toward the vehicle, trying to see inside, maybe expecting some sort of celebrity entourage. Wilcox, Wilcox brings the vehicle to a stop. I presume I'm not supposed to run these people over. Yeah, not tonight. Hey, Lizzie, is there a good way for us to get in there? Yeah, I'll bring you in. It's gonna be fun. <sighs> Do you guys like to dance? Yes, but... Depends on the music. That. Bronx Cheer is great. They're amazing. They're my favorite band. Uh, They're kindred. Oh. They're licks like us. Oh. One of them's even a thin blood. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Pretty well, cool, huh? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Exciting. Wilcox opens the doors. The crowd presses forward. They seem disappointed. Take it all in. Is this an all kindred club or is this? Lizzie says no. Then these, odd these are is us. activated. Odd is. In. Well, now they're impressed. Now they're paying We're attention. <laughs> the crowd presumes that you are in charge of this entourage and makes way. There are a lot of cell phones around here. Pictures get taken. Is there any pointed at me, perhaps? Well, it's difficult to say which of the specific cell phones is pointed at whom, but it's safe to say that your image is recorded at some point. I'm gonna definitely bump into one by accident, kind of like, oh, I'm so sorry. What is your plan here? I'm what just trying, trying to, to like kill one of the phones at least and like toss it out of their hand. Right. You're actually trying to knock the phone away? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make a Dex and Athletics roll. What do we have? What are you doing? Two successes? Phone goes flying, hits the brick wall of the club, screen cracks, slides to the floor. What the hell, lady? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I lost my balance and you happened to be in the way. What, you owe me a new phone? All right, I don't think she owes you anything. Let's calm down, we don't want any trouble. Well, then you shouldn't have wrecked my phone like that. I was clumsy, I'm sorry. Come on! You can't wreck a guy's phone and just walk away. Well, it's very rude to take a photo of somebody if they didn't consent to. Aw, oh, crap. As my awe still activated, is that working on it? <laughs> well, the awe makes you impressive and attractive, but it doesn't change his behavior. Fair. It will, however, add dice to any pools that you want to form that use your social skills. Look. I'm just saying, you broke my phone, you owe me. If it makes you feel any better, she broke my phone too, so she owes me about- What the hell, me, lady? Know. Are you like the phone-breaking bandit? What's the deal? I told you, I'm klutzy. Well, look, 
uh, well, I would ask for your number, but I don't have a phone to put it into now. So how are we going to settle this? You can ask for her number instead. Absolutely Well, not. I still don't have a phone to put it into, so. You have to rely on your memory. Wow, what a concept. <gasps> memory. It might be too hard. What the hell is wrong with you people? Nothing. Why? Oh, this sucks. You know, if you I'm get getting people, security. Hmm, if you get people personal space, then this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So maybe next time you learn to give somebody their personal space and somebody doesn't accidentally knock something out of your hand. I can accept that it was an accident, but you also accidentally owe me a new phone. I reach over and sort of grab his shoulder with my right hand, with my left hand. I just give him a wad of cash. We can just settle this the easy way. That'll work. Bye. So there, tucks the cash away, picks up the pieces of his phone. Maybe he thinks he can repair it. Not sure. Was that really necessary? I don't like being recorded. Well, kind of hard to live in the world without it, ain't it? You gotta kind of assume that, you know, your picture's always being taken. That's what Richter says anyway. Yes, well, if there's a picture taken of me, the masquerade is broken. <sighs> That sounds super inconvenient. You think? Let's get out of here. Let's get inside. Yeah, we can go. The music. I want to get a drink. And Consuelo is waiting for us. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Sorry, guys. No, it's fine. It's fine, Coco. That's just you owe me two thousand dollars now. So just keep it. What an expensive phone. Do you know how much phones cost? I have no idea. Is it I have with a interest? Flip phone. Hmm? Is it with interest? Well, just don't take too long about it. Hey, killers. Hey. You're on time. Boss man likes that. The individual facing you is petite. Like her compatriot whom you've brought home. She hugs Lizzie, looks her over, checks to make sure she's not broken. She has fine, almost elfin features, big, big eyes hiding behind cat's eye glasses. She has flame red hair and tight curls. And she's wearing um, a little black dress that you would think would be more appropriate to a cocktail party than a Bronx Rager. Accessorized with uh, knee-high boots, velvet opera gloves, and a lot of gold jewelry. I'm Consuela. I'm Braun, and these are our friends. Here's your friend back. I know, it's so good to have her home. We were very worried. You have a very interesting name. Consuela? Yes, my name is Consuela Elena Romona Confrisi. That's a mouthful. Yes, but you can call me Coco. Coco, that's easier. Well, you can call me Consuela. I chose my name myself. Huh? Mm. Hmm? Lovely. I'm Kalita. Hey, Kalita. Always hungry. Words to live by. I know. Or not. Little thing in cheek. Or not. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Oh. Kindred humor. That umps. Let's describe the scene inside as she escorts you. The main dance floor of the cage is huge, cavernous. It's the main area of the old cement factory, and it's been gutted to accommodate this vast dancing space. There's a stage at one end, and what isn't stage and dance floor is bar, an enormous bar, towering shelves. The crowd is moderate, probably not its best night, but people are still arriving. Maybe it'll be full later. There's a DJ warming up the crowd. Apparently the main act hasn't taken the stage yet. The lights are these strange contraptions stuffed into these odd barrel-like shapes that rotate, and you realize as you look at them that they're old-style cement mixing bins that have been converted into light fixtures. But the thing that really dominates the dance floor area is the cage. Up, 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 way up by the ceiling is an enormous metal cage. Big, square, full of people dancing, kissing, making out, hanging from the bars, 
The thing sways back and forth on a set of industrial chains. And you hope they're sturdy. Yeah. You can see a balcony running around the upper edges at the cage level, too. And there are people upstairs watching the action on the floor. What do you think? It's different. Well, you're different. We don't often get visitors from your side of the city, so oh. hope you like it. It's not pedantic. It's a lot. Yeah. Definitely not pedantic. No. Mm -mm. Are you gonna stay for the band? We're here to talk. Soon enough, soon enough. I'm supposed to give you a little tour first. Oh. So we do to all our, our guests on their very first visit. We get the VIP tour? It's a courtesy detail. Richard wants to make sure you understand who you're dealing with. Mm. To make sure that there's no mistake. Yeah, it's, I gotta say, you're a little different than what I thought. I mean, ooh, how exciting. What did you think I would be? Well, the the Anarchs, right? I they're, am an Anarch, at least nominally. Yeah, they're, they're a little messed up, you know? They're free, and they run around killing each other, and there's no order or anything. <laughs> Wherever did you get these outrageous ideas? Mr. Braun, you are a sketch. No, no. No, it's the truth. You can't fool me. Well, maybe you'll come to see a different side of us tonight, or maybe not. I heard about you from Airbox. Oh, he was talking about me, huh? Oh, yeah. What'd he say? He said you should fight in the pit. This fucking guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we also gonna tour the pit? Is that part of the... Are you ready for the next stop on the tour? Why, yes. Consuela takes you away from the dance floor through a side door, down a set of metal industrial stairs, clearly left over from when this place was a working factory. Downstairs, it's a maze of brick-lined corridors and hallways, storage rooms. You pass a lot of mortals carrying liquor bottles and bags of ice, and trays of food, and they don't pay any attention to you, but when they encounter Consuelo, they all move as far away as they can to the other side of wherever they happen to be. And most of them either do not look at her or they look at her with a little bit of concern. Lizzie, they pay no attention to whatsoever. So, first stop on the tour, our tanning salon. Wait, really? Excuse me? Yes, absolutely. So, she takes you to a huge metal door. It's got one of those wheels in it that you have to spin to open it. She spins it open, pulls it on its hinges, and there is a dingy, dank, brick-lined cellar room here. As big as a couple of broom closets, perhaps. And in the center, there is a very old-fashioned barber chair, one of those big metal and leather contraptions that were popular in earlier centuries. It's bolted to the center of the floor of this little room, and the bolts look very sturdy. And then she points up. There's a skylight with an iron grating. Oh, shit. Open to the night sky. Like I said, our tanning salon. You are an ox. You're dark. Is there some kind of message you're trying to send to us? Uh, I would have thought that would be obvious, yes. Message received. Not like funny. I said, Richter wants you to know who you're dealing with. Okay. Okay, I was right. Oh, um, but to be fair, Miss, I'm sorry, Miss. I didn't tell you my name. I know, that's why I'm asking. Kiem. Kiem, Miss Kiem. To be fair, the threat is implied, but not explicit. Seems pretty explicit to me. Moving on. Yeah. She leads you through more corridors, past more mortals going about their assigned tasks. It's at this point you notice that Lizzie is no longer with you. Where'd she go? Oh, she does that. Do we have to bring her to Richter? Or? No, no, no. It's all it's all in hand, I assure you. It's okay. Is she gonna get in trouble? 
I doubt it. Okay. Not that I care. Of course not. Do the Anarchs not care about breaching the masquerade? We care. We care about keeping secret. We don't go out of our way to call attention to ourselves, if that's what you mean. Like opening and an art gallery full of magic paintings? You'll have to talk to Richter about that. My business is this club. Hmm. This you, is what I do. You run a club? I run this club. Hmm. You don't seem very enthused. What do you do? I run a shipping company. That's exciting. It is when you want it to be. I don't know, I think my like my life and my unlife better. You like to live in the light, the limelight, so to speak. Well, has its benefits. I'd rather not. Suit yourself. I did. Next stop. You can hear sound of murmured excited voices ahead of you. And through another door, you find yourself in the pit. This was some sort of manufacturing room and the central part of the floor has been hollowed out to create exactly what the name suggests, a big concrete lined pit. Rising up around it, aluminum bleachers. A dozen or so individuals, and you can't really tell whether or not they are mortal or kindred just by looking at them, except that one must be a Nosferatu over there. Mm. This is the pit. Busy. Mm hmm Yeah, no, uh, nobody's, uh, nobody's fighting yet, but later. Any particular warning we should take away with this? No, this is for entertainment. What are the rules? Yes, yeah, there's the a sign-up sheet. How does this work? Absolutely. If you want to fight in the pit, you clear it with me. Your name gets on the roster. But I choose the matchups. Well, all I'm saying is that uh, Airbox and I are sort of owe the rematch if he's up for it. But I understand if he's too scared. You know, I came out of nowhere, didn't make an appointment. He's probably shaking his little booties. I think he'd love it. And so Hold would on. I. Ron, is this for your personal satisfaction, or is this something to do with the group? Listen, they just showed us that sun tanning room. Mm. They're trying to scare us. We gotta scare them right back. And how long do these fights last? Is there like a safe word? Till somebody can't go on. I haven't seen anybody meet the final death yet, but Good chances. plenty of them leave in a coma. Uh. Why are you interested, Miss Hungry? Me? No, absolutely not, but I love spectator sports. Well, maybe you'd care to play some side wagers. Perhaps. There's a lot of money to be made in this sort of thing. I know someone who needs money. You owe me money. Go, go. Do you think you could win this match, Ron? Yeah, that guy? Uh, I'm in proper form. I've been rested, and I know that a fight's coming. No I'll problem. put you on the list. Thanks. Well, let's see the boss man first. What I'm here to do. Ready? Ready. As we're walking, is it possible to pull uh, Braun aside? To have a quiet word in his ear? Just Absolutely. Real quick word. Of course. You really think this is advantageous for us? We haven't completed the mission yet, and you're going to already blow it off course. Well, we'll go and talk to Richter first, and... See what he has to say. If we gotta get out of here, then it's just a canceled appointment. He's already pissed at me, so... If he pushes the agenda further, maybe it will make a point. You actually think you can take this person? Who are you asking? The real me? Or the me I gotta be to win? The real you. Never take a dive. I'm gonna win. You're gonna win. Yeah. You also realize that you can always be the real you in front of me, right? If I'm the real you, me, I get in trouble and shoot my mouth off. You do it so well. You're so calm all the time. I don't know how you do it. Practice restraint. It's not easy. Like knots? Like knots? Mm-hmm. You ball them up inside. Hold on to it. Oh, those kind of restraints. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, you release a furious blow on people. All right, restraint, 
Restraint. Uh, I'll be restrained for now. Okay. Consuela leads you to a service elevator, ushers you inside, closes the doors, and the lift brings you up several floors. It opens into a long meeting room. In the center is a huge table with a polished dark surface and many, many empty chairs, except for two at the very far end. One of the individuals that is seated at the table you recognize, and it's Lizzie, and she is seated examining her long, sharp nails. At the head of the table is the individual you must presume is your host. He stands up and waves you over. He's wearing a white linen dress shirt, a pinstripe vest, but no coat. And his dress slacks are bloused into his Doc Martens. His hair is long, brown and fine, tied back in a long ponytail. Strong features, good jaw. Airbox is standing slightly behind him. And in the shadows furthest away is an individual squatting on his haunches, a large, stocky, bearded individual, long, curly, dark hair. He lets his fangs be seen very clearly. He's wearing fatigues, combat boots. One more feature to mention. The walls of the room are painted the same matte black, except for one. It's all floor to ceiling length windows that offer a terrific view of the parking lot, and you can even see your town car down there, and the old cement factory machinery and the East River moving darkly by in the night. Well, I haven't got all night. Let's go, let's go. Uh, we'll make a note as you sit down, Braun will take a standing position mirroring uh, the other one. Airbox. Airbox. Looks at you and nods. Glad you could make it. Wouldn't have missed it. What's popping? You are Lizzie, apparently. We brought her back. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Don't think it was your decision. Only doing what I'm told. Exactly. I believe proper introductions weren't made. I'm Kalita. Yeah, I thought so. You're, uh, you're Rafferty's kid. Mm-hmm. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. I like your shirt. Thank you. I like shirts that make a statement. My sentiments exactly. Always hungry. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah, true. So, who's your friends? What's with uh, Miss uh, Beautiful Dark and Brooding over here? I will let them introduce themselves. I am Consuela Elena Ramona Confrisi, but you can call me Coco. Another Consuela. Hey, did you hear that, Consuela? Yeah, we've met. Coco. Sir. Like the, uh... Perfume. Yeah. Okay. Not the cereal. Not the cereal. Unless you want to have killer following it. Not really. Great. Perfume it is. Impressive, though. Thank Good you. Good stick. Thanks. I'm going to stand behind the groove and mirror um, the one that's in the fatigue, mm. but opposite now. Mm. Over here. Assuming the same stance. I'm classier. I'll stand. Mm. But you heels. make a point of it. Mm -hmm. What do you want to project with your body posture? What message are you trying to send? It's this time a very calm but strong presence as like kind of make eye contact with the one in the back mm -hmm. just to be like, I see you in the shadow. You let him know that you see him and you're aware of him. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do very much take a seat opposite uh, Richter. Oh, you help yourself. I do. Mm -hmm. He seems to approve. 
Ah. Uh, you need no introduction. You're Braun. Yeah. Yeah, you me. kicked around my guy. You oh, should he told the, you that. You should fight in the pit. It may be arranged in the future. Uh, would you be interested in uh, providing a wager of some sort? Oh, I'll bet. I'll, I'll definitely make a bet. Oh, because uh, I won last time. I don't know if you know. Wait, I heard it. The fight wasn't conclusive. Seemed conclusive to us. And you are... Kim. Nice to make your acquaintance. Nice to make yours. I like the glitter thing. Thanks. Shiny's good. Shiny is very good. Hmm? I go and I sit closest to Lizzie. We brought her back to you, as promised. Good thing. Saved me a lot of trouble. Appreciate it. You wanted her back badly? I mean, badly enough. All right, well then, I assume message received. She was breaking the masquerade. Don't do that. There you go. Here's your slap on your wrist. Seems like she wouldn't have broken the masquerade if you hadn't poked your noses in. Nobody asked you. Well, it seems that uh, word has gotten around of unusual activity, so of course we have to go see what was going on. And what'd you think? Pretty talented, huh? <clears throat> it's an acquired taste. Yeah, whatever. If Lizzie is going to practice her craft, even in such a subtle way, she does need permission to do it in our territory. Your territory? Yes. It is now. It is our territory. Oh, seriously? Oh, uh -huh. Rafferty, you asshole. Okay, great. Okay, okay. So, good. let me get this straight. You own that turf now. Yes. Yep. Well, isn't that special? So okay. we just wanted to make sure that you wouldn't be coming by again. Oh, I don't think you can count on that, but we'll see. No promises. At least displaying that. It's free sort of country, behavior. I hear. Of course, but there's always etiquette, you see. All right, all right. I got no beef with Rafferty. He did me a solid sending Lizzie back and allowing me to make your acquaintance. Hmm. Can we call it quits? Keep in mind I'm being magnanimous here, so the appropriate answer is yes. Yes, and thank you for your hospitality. I'd rather hear it from Miss Kalita as she represents her sire. I believe we're square now, as they say. Okay. Suppose Lizzie wants to visit your turf. How do you want to handle it? I would say she would have to make a formal request and upon approval, pending, she, you know, abides by rules of etiquette. Lizzie, what do you think? Sounds okay to me. What does formal mean in this case? She would have to ask either us or my sire. God. Don't you licks ever get tired of taking the long way around? There's no need for foul language. Can we just send you a text and say, hey, Kendry coming in, lick of the night. <laughs> That'd be great to send over a text. Just a masquerade breach after masquerade breach. Oh. God, spare me. It's a sign of respect. As we are showing you now. Hmm. What do you think, Kim? Heard you stuck Lizzie with your pig sticker. You think it's fair deal? I think she broke a promise. So yes. Ooh, you're into promises? Pledges, vows, oaths? Did you take an oath to Rafferty? That's coming, you know. Sooner or later, he's going to ask you to do it. Nothing so formal for me. But Lizzie made a promise. A very easy one to keep. But she didn't. 
So, she paid her price. She's fine. It was one little stab. We heal. We sleep. She's fine. Pretty cavalier attitude. I like it. I like it. Well, guess that brings the matter to a successful conclusion, as far as it goes. You're my guest tonight. Enjoy yourselves. Dance. Drink. This ain't no Elysium. You can throw a punch here. You can use your powers here. Just clean up after yourselves. And if you happen to take your feasting a little too far, make sure Consuela knows so we can clean up the mess. Uh, thank you for your hospitality. You should stick around for the band. Bronx cheer, they're great. That's how they pay their rent, you know? That's a selling point. Yeah, I mean, don't you guys pay rent? You gotta pay something. We own territory now. Yeah. Yeah, but who gave it to you? I'm not here to start any arguments, but being Camarilla has been pretty great on my end. That's all I'm gonna say. Think you're missing out. And I'm independently wealthy, so. Missing out on what? Sounds like you have a lot of rules you gotta follow. A rules lot of... that protect us. You think so? Yeah. Of course. Hmm. I think we do just fine. Even in the living world, how do you survive without rules? Seem to work for me. Works even better now that I ain't living. Mm. There's a difference between freedom and autonomy. We got autonomy. For now. Freedom's, you know, that's the kind of stuff Torque talks about. Screw that. Uh, guy. That's Screw the that new guy. guy, right? Yeah, he thinks he's a new Baron. Screw that guy. Oh, so you don't follow Torque? <laughs> follow Torque? That'll be the day. That'll be the night. Interesting. So you don't get along with the current Baron? I'm a busy guy. I got shit to do. Like what? Like running the South Bronx. This is my territory. This is all my territory. So you a Baron too? Nah. Titles. What's the point? Um, Richter. That's good enough for me. But this Torque fellow, he's Baron of, if not the Bronx. Who knows? He can be the Baron of my boot for all I care. If he wants to enforce it, he knows where to find me. Hmm. I kind of like this guy. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. 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 So, while you're here, here are my rules. Like I said, not Elysium. You go where you want, do what you want, do what you want to whoever you want, but if you make a mess, let Consuela know. And really, the band really is worth it. I promise. Mm. That, uh, that thin blood guitarist, Francis, incredible. You keep saying that word. I'm not too familiar with a thin blooded. Ah, uh, yeah, it's some kind of, some kind of, I suppose, end of the line. You know, you got a sire, your sire's got a sire, they got a sire all the way back to who knows how old. Yeah. But eventually, the way I hear it, the blood runs out. Well, eventually, you get a kindred so weak they can't make any more. That's the end of the line, the thin bloods. Not sure exactly why they call them that, I guess, because they're weak. <laughs> they're weird. Some of them, and I'm not making this up, some of them can walk in the sun. Whoa. Some of them can eat food, drink a beer. Huh. Some of them can do really strange things. Talk to Francis about it if you want to know more. Huh. He's out here from LA, I guess. Yeah. All right. I got other stuff to do. We got a dead Callahan and a wannabe Baron, and I got crime to do, and so I'm busy kindred. Busy lick. So. Enjoy the place. Let Consuelo know if you need anything. Thank you. We'll uh, let you uh, to uh, do your crime. 
It's what I do best. Save me a dance later. You got it. And uh, you let Consuelo know when you're ready to go. Yeah, always. And by go, I mean. Yeah, 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 always. Good. Now get out of here. All right. Thanks for your time. Before we leave, I slip Lizzie a card. What's on the card? Just my number. If you ever want to talk again. You can't have any more of my hair. Okay. I have enough. For what? Nothing. Thank you. Consuela escorts you to the service elevator. As we're heading back, I'm texting Rafferty. Um, how do I know who's Margot? What does she look like? A few moments later, he texts you back a photograph. Mm. Margot's beautiful. She has rose gold hair and curls. Beautiful, dark skin, very full mouth, striking eyes. You'd know her if you saw her. I text him back a little lip print emoji. He texts back the automobile emoji and a question mark. And then he texts, sorry, mistake. <laughs> okay. Gotta have a talk with him about that. Consuela takes you back down the club floor. We'll take a pause in our vampire story and then we'll explore the cage. Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle New York by Night Season 2 Episode 3 Festivals of Babylon. We return to our coterie as they exit Richter's office down the service elevator and out onto the main dance floor where Bronx cheer was beginning to warm up. The club is a lot more full now. There are many more mortals here. The floor isn't quite packed, but not far from it. And that cage has a lot of people in it and it's beginning to sway back and forth a little alarmingly. They can't be safe. It looks fun. Consuela assures you that they've never had a fatal accident with the cage. Never, not even once. I, I'm game to check it out. Now I know you're eager to get your fight on. Oh yeah, yeah. Why don't I let you know when we're ready for you? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm pretty easy to find, I guess. Yeah, you uh, do stand out a little bit. You know what? That's okay, we don't mind. You should be yourself here. If anybody gives you any crap about it, you get right in their face, Mr. Braun. Yeah? Yeah. And then what? Whatever you gotta do to make them respect you. Okay, okay, yeah. We okay. don't condemn people for what they can't avoid. Thanks. You should talk to Ogilvy. He'll let you know what's up. You'll find him uh, in the pit making bets. Ah, uh, well, I'm headed there eventually anyway, right? Well, enjoy yourselves. If you want a drink, help yourselves. Mm, thank you. Mm. Don't look at me like that. Like what? I don't know. I'm getting a weird vibe from uh, my namesake. Sorry, it's just how I look. Resting lick face. <laughs> so to speak. Mm, well, I don't take offense. We Consuelas should stick together. We should. We really should. Especially when we look so fabulous. I agree. Well, enjoy yourselves. Sure. I have things to do. She leaves you. Toodles. And you're loose in the club. You really gonna go fight? Yeah, unless you think it's a bad idea. Well, why shouldn't you? I am not of the type to want to create a scene. But there's already a scene. They're fabricating it for spectators. We don't have not? to add to it. Yeah, but he's going to come after me no matter what. You saw what he looked like in that room. He was itching to fight. Listen, if he's going to come after you, better to do it in a pit with rules. 
other than rather than make a scene outside of it. Yeah, but you think that they're going to actually follow the rules? Like, you really think that they're not going to cheat you inside there? There could be other we'll things know. waiting for you. Uh, Have you ever okay. thought about the cage being electric or something? No. Do you well, think they'd do that? They're the Anarchs. They don't fucking ro follow rules. I'm sure they got some rules. Maybe. Yeah, break them. I appreciate the concern, Coco. I do, but I think I gotta do this. How about this? Maybe check it out before you go in. And when you're there, we'll all be there for you. So if anything happens, we bounce. Yeah. We did talk about being more of a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember what I told you? The strength. At that moment, I just disappearance to the shadows. Just do a, you do a fade off the floor. And find she's yourself gone. <laughs> some deep shadows. What are you doing? What is your plan? Plan is really to kind of survey the area, kind of get mm. a, a lay of the land, who's where, who's uh, who's talking to whom, um, entrances and exits, just to make sure that if we have to get mm. out, I'm, I can help my team get out quick. So you are essentially reconnoitering, mm -hmm. following wherever the night takes you, mm -hmm. examining Entrances and exits, stairways, doors. I do Are have you... an interest in the um, the kindred that was across from me that was on his hind legs and the fatigues. Hmm. You weren't introduced. Are you going to keep an eye out for him? I am. I see. And your ear is open? Always. All right. Hold that thought. What about you, Kalita? Kalita is definitely on the prowl for this Marco. So you're scanning the crowd, keeping your eyes open for this individual. Duly noted. Any other plans? Well, if uh, Richter did want to take her up on that dance, she wouldn't say no. I have made a note. It's hard to distinguish individuals' faces in the dance floor. It's a big crowd, a lot of moving lights, very kinetic scene as people move and sway and dance and kiss and make out push each other, fight a little, but maybe you'll spot her. I hope so. Bronx Shear finally takes the stage. It's not an easy sound to pinpoint. It's a trio. There's a woman with long, dark, beautiful hair, very dark eyes, and the voice of a siren. There's a thin, short, spiky-haired person with unnaturally green follicles. Can't be her natural color. She's on the drums. And then there's a thin and yet athletic, lean, dark-haired individual wearing very baggy clothing, playing bass. That must be Francis. The crowd loves this sound, whatever it is. It's part noise pop, part punk pop, part plain old punk, part industrial with a little hip hop beat thrown into. It's impossible to categorize it completely, but it's working for this crowd. They absolutely love this band. And if you're not careful, they sweep you onto the dance floor too. Maybe not such a terrible thing to dance anonymously in the dark. Might not be a bad way to spend it on life. Kim, you seem to be sticking close to Braun. What else is happening? I haven't been in a place with so many people packed so close in so long. It's exciting. Exciting. A little sweaty, but whatever. Well, if it's too crowded down here, how about up there? I'm so in. Let's go to the cage. Okay. But let's not take the stairs. Okay. Soaring leap. Soaring leap. <laughs> we both From the it. floor <laughs> to the cage. Yeah. <laughs> Your muscles tense. You launch yourself upwards, grabbing the bars, swaying dangerously. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, hey, careful! Okay. Whoa! So I don't have soaring leap, but I will use my athletics to jump from the floor to climb a little bit up onto the side balcony and jump from the balcony over to the cage. You're gonna parkour your way up there. Yeah. Okay, 
Let's make it. Um, let's make it dexterity and athletics. Okay. And let me know if you want to add anything mm. to it. Oh, I've got plenty. Let's see for four. One, two, three, four, four five, is what six, I was looking seven, for. eight total because I have a critical. Eight successes. Parkour, parkour. It's like watching the amazing Spider-Man from the dance floor up the side of the wall, bouncing Whoa. off one of those weird industrial metal fixtures left over from the cement factory days, launching yourself to the balcony, nimbly along the railing, and then somersaulting out into space. For a moment, the crowd is sure you are going to fall, but you don't. <sighs> you land on top of the cage and stick that landing. It was More a thing of beauty to watch. Applause erupts from the crowd below and the people in the cage. The hatch door opens and you are invited in. <laughs> I'm with her! You both make your way inside. It's difficult to keep your footing in this place. You gotta be very, very careful. The spaces aren't big enough for you to fall between and down, but it's not easy to maintain your balance either, especially with people moving around. But it's exhilarating being this high up off the crowd, hanging from these chains. That's a good warm-up for your fight, don't you think? Yeah, I guess. If I don't get seasick up here. <laughs> Ooh. Coco. You reconnoiter the club. Through the corridors, the hallways. Sticking your nose in places where maybe it doesn't quite belong, but nobody bothers you, nobody questions you, nobody asks you what you're doing. There's one room where the door is closed and there's a little red paper tag hanging off the knob. Do you go in or do you pass it by? I'm gonna go in. The people in the room look up hazily at you. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? How are you? Oh, gorgeous. Seated in the center of the room on a pile of skins and furs. It's a beautiful individual with long dark hair, dark eyes. She's enjoying herself taking blood from each of these vessels in turn. There's a tangle of limbs, a lot of faces. Some hands stretch languidly out toward you as though inviting you to join. The vampire looks up from the middle of this tableau, smiles at you, the blood still trickling down her fangs. Thirsty? I'm good. <laughs> Suit yourself. Um, uh, who are you? Oh, excuse me. She licks the blood from her fangs and off her lips. I'm Simone. And you are who? Um, <clears throat> I'm Coco. Love your look. Thank you, I could say the same about you. Well, one always looks good draped in victims. Uh, potentially, um, what is going on here? What are you- um... This is the snack bar, what do you think? I am not one to enjoy my food hot. Oh, well, I am. More for me. I'm a, more of a, uh, I like it cold, just like revenge. Ooh, poetic, but you. Nice to meet you, Coco. Right back at you. Simone, what is it, um, you're, you just hang out here at the club? When I want to. And um, when you don't want to. Hmm. Why don't you ask Richter? See what he says. Richter. Uh, he seems to be a bit of a difficult man to talk to this no, evening. No, he's a pussy cat when you get to know him. And he's a friend. A pussy cat? Absolutely. You could wrap him around your little finger. How so? Oh, you can figure it out, I'm sure. I apologize. I don't have the feminine wilds like some of my compatriots. Oh, you need help. 
You need help, girl. I haven't got time to give you a lesson right now. I'm a little busy, as you can see. So if you're just going to stand in the door chit-chatting, maybe you could leave me to my snack and we'll talk later. My apologies for intruding. Apology accepted. Kalita. Your explorations so far have unfortunately yielded no sign of this Margot Walker hmm. that your sire asked you to keep an eye out for. But it does bring you into contact with Consuela again. You find her at one end of that long, tall bar. She's got a clipboard, she's checking things off, she's staring out over the dance floor approvingly, she looks up at the cage with a big smile as your associates enjoy themselves, checks to make sure that everything is going well on stage. Miss Kalita. Hello. You give the impression of looking for somebody. I am looking for somebody, you're so astute. I've always thought so. I'm looking for someone named Margot. Margo? Do you know her? Absolutely. What do you want with her? She doesn't really, I mean, well, on the other hand, who knows? Perhaps you'd get along. I what do I know? To... She's not here tonight, I don't think. I oh. haven't seen her anyway. Her, she and her little friends haven't been by in a few nights. Hmm. But they frequent this place? Well, they work for Richter, so they come by occasionally, mostly when it's time for rent collection. I see. Richter has a great system. Hmm. You know, he can't afford to watch the whole of the South Bronx at the same time. Yeah. So, coteries get turf from him, and they pay rent every month. Bronx Cheer there pays their rent by playing the stage. Margo and her little friends do other things. And how do they pay their rent? Well, I guess you could say that they're kind of errand runners. Hmm. Seems to be common. Tragically so. Mm. You don't seem like a common anything. Thank you. I just wanted to say hi. Hi. Not to you, to her, I mean, but hello also to you. Well, if I see Margot tonight, I will let you know. Great. Are you gonna watch the fight? Oh, yes. Are you placing a wager? I might. Depends. Well, good luck. If I was to place a wager, would I be placing that with you? I think you should talk to Ogilvy in the pit. Ogilvy. He usually holds the money. Got you. Uh, great band. Bronx Cheer, aren't mm. they just the living end? Yes. Or, you know, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're fantastic. Um, Darby's local. Farida comes from, I'm not sure exactly, somewhere in Europe. Hmm. And uh, Francis uh, just blew in recently from the Free States. Really? And they formed a band together just like that? They sound like they've been practicing together for... Some people just naturally have talent. Yeah. You know how it is. Hmm. You know. So tell me about yourself. Is this your only establishment? Do you have your fingers in a lot of pies, as they say? I have all I do, can do to keep this place running. Hmm. You know, I take care of this. Richard takes care of me. It's a very mutually beneficial arrangement. Hmm. Most of the Anarchs in this part of town come here eventually. It's like, what's that place in the movie? Casablanca. Hmm. Except for Lex. This place? Absolutely. Why go anywhere else? Everything you need is here. I'm sure you're absolutely correct on Look, that. Look, Kalita, if we don't have it, you don't need it. Well, how, is, uh, how have things been for you since Callahan died? Nothing's changed. Who cares? He was a jerk. Never saw it? him. He made no impact whatsoever on my business. Mm. And this Torque fellow, does he impact your business? Torque talks a big game. Revolution this, rebellion that, or at least before Callahan did the big, you know, died. Mm. Now it's all, we should negotiate with the Camarilla. We should uh, make an arrangement. Maybe we can some 
accommodate them. I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. First he's all, tear it down, burn the tower. And now it's all, we should take this slow. Who knows? Mm. What do you think's changed? Or do you think he was always in it for this? I think he's a jerk. Maybe you should ask him. He might be around tonight too, you never know. Oh, what does he look like? Mm, tall, dark, and handsome. Just like I like him. He uh, usually has a hat, and he wears it well. That's all you got for me? Just a hat? Well, Any kind of hat? Mm, Please, not a fedora. Well, I mean, mm. he wears it well. He wears it well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him that. Look, you can't miss him. He's always got an entourage. He's a big, he's a big wheel. Okay. I look, uh, I look forward to meeting him. And uh, that uh, dance with Richter. Is that happening? I certainly hope so. She doesn't look happy to hear this. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that, are you guys a thing? No. Were you a thing? I am really very busy, and so if you'll excuse me, I've got some things to do. You enjoy yourself. I'll leave you to it. Yeah, good idea. Coco, as you are weaving your way in and out of strange places, various rooms, there's a small sound behind you. Your instincts come on alert. Hello? Stepping out of the shadows in the same way that you step out of the shadows sometimes. There's a slender woman with messy, dark hair. Dark club clothes that look like they might have come from Hot Topic. She's even got a silver onk. She's smoking a cigarette. How you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm Julia. Julia. We've got a lot in common, and we should talk. Now, how do you know we have a lot in common? She snaps her fingers a few times, and little tendrils of shadow wrap around her hand and flicker in the night. That's how I know. Meanwhile, back in the cage. Yeah. You have become the stars of the dance cage. People lift you up, put you on their shoulders, carry you around. You are setting the trend up here. It's very liberating. Maybe it was wrong. This is kind of nice. Not stuffy like all the meetings we have to do. It is kind of nice. And to be honest, Ron, I don't know what kind of life you used to have before. Yeah. But I find myself more alive in my unlife than I ever was before. You know what? You got a point. I'm definitely stronger than I could ever be as a, a normal person, you know? Me too. Maybe it's not all bad. I don't think it is. I feel more free than I have ever. We oh. should go down and check out some of these fights while they're going on, though. If Coco's right, they may be doing some funny business, and we may be able to spot it. <sighs> Back to work? Well, we can enjoy a little bit more. A little bit more. Maybe one more song or two. Before we head down, or maybe on the way down, I want to ask you, Bron. Yeah. Are you happy with the life you have now, with how this is going? To be honest, I think, I mean, you're new to all this. We all kind of get a crappy hand dealt to us, no matter what, when we're changed, right? But sometimes it really gets to you and messes with your normal life that you had before. To answer your question, I don't miss it, really. I'm better off now than I was. It's just... Now everybody owns a piece of me. I don't really mind, though. It's better than not being wanted at all. I share the sentiment. I like that we formed a small group here. I hope it works out. But 
I'm starting to see some problems. Yeah? Well, the Anarchs, it's not all silver, right? This is more fun than it was the Graffer case, wasn't it? We gotta keep our head in the game. This is how they get to you, you know? <sighs> well, we gotta stay strong, okay? We're here, we're the Camarilla. We gotta show them that we're the bosses, okay? Otherwise, they can't live like this. They enjoy this freedom because we're here. Maintaining the peace everywhere else, all right? You're right. This is our gift to them, and we just happen to enjoy it sometimes. I share your worry about people owning a piece of me. I don't want that to ever happen again. Well, it's gonna be a long, long unlife for you. I feel like we can take care of it at some point. A long time, like you said. Yeah, long time. <sighs> let's go to the cage. Sorry, the pit. Yeah, let's go to the pit. <laughs> On your way to the pit. Okay. Kalita. You haven't been able to find Margot, and Richter hasn't turned up. Hmm. That's. O for two so far tonight. Oh, yeah. Who does come into your line of sight, though, is that kindred you weren't introduced to up in Richter's office, the one with the fatigues and the boots, the black beard and the unkempt hair. He simply walks through the crowd right over to you. Hey. I have a name. It's not Hey. Hey, what's your name? Kalita. I didn't get yours. Didn't give it. Mario. Mario. So you're Mario. Thanks for bringing Lizzie back. Appreciate it. Of course. Airbox is stupid to bring her over to Manhattan. I mean, I think we just got off on the wrong foot and things got a little out of hand. Nothing we can't fix, right? Right. So, are we seeing you around here more often? Is this some kind of new thing? I might be making an appearance. Huh, okay. Okay, Unless cool. You're, if I could ask. Yeah? What's your deal? What do you do? I work for Richter. Are you the arms and the muscle? No, that's Airbox. And so what um, do you do? I'm more what you kind of call special projects. Special projects? Yeah. So mysterious. Oh, I'm good with animals. And I can usually find anybody I want to find. That's useful. I found you. You did. Is it true that your friend with the dark hair is La Sombra? It's what I heard. Is it what you heard? It's what I heard. And how would you uh, come to that conclusion? It's just what I heard. Hmm. Is it maybe, true? Maybe you ought to ask her. But I'm asking you. Hmm. See, if she was here, I would ask her, but she's not here, so I'm asking you. Oh, well, you know, there might be a reason that. But, um, you know, you really didn't want to tell me about your special project, so I don't know if I want to give away secrets. <sighs> you cameos are boring. All right, keep your secrets. I'll keep mine. Oh. Nah, you had your chance. Offers off the table. That's no fun. Look, pit fights are starting soon. Want to go? I do. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. do it. Allow me. She takes his arm. He likes that. Makes a big show of it. Mm. Hey, look, I got somebody walking with me. <laughs> He's very pleased with himself. Meanwhile, downstairs, in that dark, brick-lined tunnel. So, it started. What, pray tell, is it? More of us are showing up. Ah. I didn't realize uh, that there would be more here, so it's quite intriguing to know that I'm not the only one here. I'm here on business. Oh? What business, if you're allowed to talk about it? You're very polite. 
I try to be. You might say I'm a special investigator. And what investigation are you conducting? Oh, I love it when they ask me questions. I'm looking into this Callahan business. What do you suspect? I suspect everybody, don't you? I mean, come on. Everybody hated this guy. Of course. But I feel that you have a better hypothesis, hypothesis than just everybody. Not yet. Too soon. Still looking into it. Trying to make points, just like you. Of course. Do you side with anybody or free agent? I'm told that if I do my work to satisfaction of the sheriff, I have a shot at membership in the big C. I see. Now, how did you get the eye of the sheriff? Yeah, it's a good question that I asked myself. I don't know exactly how I was, you know, nominated for this honor. It just happened. Stuff happens in the Camarilla. You noticed. Mm-hmm. Everybody's pulling somebody else's string. Who's pulling your strings? A uh, man by the name of Rafferty. Ooh, up and comer. Venture. Mm-hmm. Don't know much about him. Fancy. Very. Very fancy. Does that mean his child's around here someplace? Perhaps. Well, aren't you just a fountain of information? You know, I like to keep my secrets much like you. You want one of these? Sure, why not? Hands you a cigarette and offers you a light. It's startling. Fire. Fire is bad for the La Sombra. Light is bad for the La Sombra. But it's not dangerous enough to stir your beast into terror. You'll have to use the plush of life to smoke the cigarette. So, make a rouse check. I fail. Ah. We meet one of our own. Yes. You know our ways. If she is not worthy, you should claim her blood. You Take it for yourself. Take her power and grow. This isn't the place or the time to do that. It is always the place and time for that. Please, I ask for mercy at this moment. Disappointing. You all right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, still getting used to the whole fire situation. Yeah, it took me a while too, but I can't give these up. Well, I guess I could, but I don't want to. Anyway, I get about 347 other kindred to ask questions of tonight, but I just wanted to make sure we met. Is there anything I could help you with, assist with? I mean, don't you have your plate full working for uh, the big R? Yes, but at the moment, I have the night off. We don't have nights off. I know better than that. You got plans, you got backup plans, you got plans to make backup to the backup plans, so spare me. It's like I'm looking into a mirror. Hey, well, yeah, but you dress better. How do you? I don't. Oh. Um, I have a PA to help me with that. I only yeah. get one look, though. She's I not have, very talented uh, with the makeup. I have somebody who helps me, too. But do you, I don't, as you see, wear a lot. How do you deal with it? It sucks. And what is it? Coco? Yes. Is that really your name? It's the shortened version of my name. I don't know what I'm going to do if this is what it is forever. Can you imagine? A hundred years from now, we got to get somebody new to learn our faces all over again. I can't believe this is what it is. Me either. I still can't deal not having a phone. I'm so used to using the phone all the time. It was my connection to mean. everything. I know what you mean. I mean, sometimes I can make it work, but you know. Well, you have better luck than I do. You know, our organization doesn't like them anyway. Yeah. 
I got it. We'll get the hang of it. We will. But we should talk again when I've got more time. I really do have to go. I gotta go see a guy about a baron. Good luck. I look forward to hearing uh, the fruits of your labor. <laughs> yeah, me too. Good luck to you too. Thanks. Night. Kalita, Braun, yeah. and Kiem all find your way to the pit. A lot more kindred down here now. The metal bleachers are filled. Some of them are leaning right up against the big solid metal railing that encircles the pit, looking down excitedly at the first match of the night. Mm. I wonder who's first. Did Two kindred that you don't recognize are going at it down there. Money is changing hands. The center of the betting seems to be that Nosferatu that you spotted earlier. Uh -huh. He's wearing a uh, dark stocking cap. Seems to be that. all the rage yeah. among the clan. He's also wearing black wraparound sunglasses. But you can see, just peeking over the tops of them, the upper arcs of huge black eyes. The sunglasses barely conceal them. He's got a wide mouth full of snaggled teeth and skin that resembles kind of well, warty epidermis, maybe like a like an elephant, uh. tough, leathery. But he's wearing a burgundy smoking jacket that looks very stylish. And his misshapen hands are collecting dollar bills, big dollar bills. Huge dollar bills. Ooh. Apparently there's some serious action going on here. In the pit, two kindred are going at it. You don't recognize them. One of them is moving so fast you can barely follow the movements with your eye. The other is using feral claws. Weapons that grow from his fingertips. Long, dark talons. Oh, Slashes, tries to land a blow on his opponent, fails. The faster kindred is just dancing around using preternatural speed to keep it out of the reach of those slashing talons. The crowd isn't sure who's going to win, but the odds seem to favor the faster kindred. So, you find Richter here as well, as well as Lizzie and Airbox seated in what must be the VIP section, which is just the highest part of the metal bleachers, a small box separate from the rest. If you guys want to go say hi to a uh, host, I'll go and talk to my cousin over there. Cousin? Oh, that's Yeah. Okay. So you feel confident in this match? I mean, it looks like the rules are no rules. You can use all your powers. Here's the thing, I haven't really gotten to test what I can really do yet, so I'm, I'm kind of excited for it. But are you, are you okay with the possibility that, I mean, this is risky. Eh, on life is risky, right? Fair. At least this time there's some sort of regulation. I guess. We'll be there if you need it way out but hopefully let's watch the end of this match see how far they take it it's almost over the faster kindred has proven simply too quick and has managed to get behind his opponent grabbed him by the back of the head and rammed his face against the side of the pit Ugh. one two three four times the kindred with the claws slides bonelessly into torpor on the floor of the pit. Whew. The crowd erupts in cheers. More money changes hands. Ogilvy pays out the winners, collects from the losers, and everybody talks excitedly while they wait for the next match. Mario, just come on, come on. All right. VIP box, let's go. Ooh, VIP box. Coco, people start moving past you talking about the fight. Pit starting. A lot of people are on their way there. Mm -hmm. What do you choose to do? I'm gonna head over. You're gonna make your way to the pit as well? Yes. Okay. 
easy to find when you enter you can see the scene as I have described it the VIP box with Richter and Lizzie and now with the kindred that you were seeking has just arrived with Kalita looks like Kiem is making her way there too but Braun has set himself apart. What are you, leaning on the railing, looking over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bench? I'm going to walk you over to, to uh, Ogilvy. Yeah, okay. Hey, cousin. Cousin? Any, uh, any tips for taking on Airbox? You are fighting Airbox. Yeah. I got roped into it. What is your fighting history? Oh, well, I used to do a little bit of boxing, and then I started coaching when I wasn't strong enough. But, you know, now I sort of dabble in fighting and uh, fight for an organization. But I know that we might be on the same side. You're a pugilist. Yeah. And you are using your skills for whom? Oh, you know, the Camarilla. Hmm. What a waste of your talent. Oh, uh, what is your life like uh, living for the Anox? Consider the following. I am here doing as I please. I answer to no one, well, except Richter and Torque. But other than that, yeah. I am a free kindred. You should consider it. I feel pretty free most of the time. And... The only rule most of these licks care about is the rule of secrecy. Yeah. Tell no one. That's pretty much it. That's a, a big one, and um, forgive me for asking if it's rude, but how do you deal with your condition out in public? Well, here, I don't have to. Yeah, I know. So I spend a lot of time here. Ah. Uh. But I possess the ability to remain unseen when I wish. Uh. And then you know, there is an assortment of hats and scarves and sunglasses and... Okay, to be honest, I don't get out a lot. Oh, I see. I'll introduce you to some makeup. It's... I've tried that. It just gets in the cracks. It doesn't work. Mm. Mm. I don't have that kind of time anyway. It's not waterproof. So, you're on tonight. Yeah. You're on the bill. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it would be such an event, though. That's a lot of people. Well, Airbox doesn't fight often, and he hasn't been beaten, so... Hasn't been beaten? Everyone is interested. Oh, wow, whoa, uh, woof, great to know that one. Hmm, hmm. He did seem, he, you know, uh, between you and me, he did seem pretty tough. Oh, you fought before? Yeah, and I think that I won. I mean, I, I made it out, right? That's a victory. Hmm, I suppose after a fashion. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thanks. Gonna need it. Oh. In the VIP box, you are made welcome. Richter seems pleased that you've decided to join his little throng. Hey, sorry, I got busy. Mm. Take a rain check on that dance. Maybe. Might happen tonight, might happen, might happen later. You're gonna come back, right? Possibly. Hey, my club's your club. Oh, how kind of you. You here for the fights? Yes. All right. It's Coco. Sir? Find what you were looking for? I did. Good. Make yourselves at home. Let's do this thing. You're up. Yeah. I got this. Crowd of kindred gets quiet. Airbox. Stands up, takes off his leather jacket. He's in very, very good shape, or he was when he was embraced. And from the box where he was sitting, he simply leaps over the heads of the crowd, grabs the railing, and lowers himself gracefully into the pit. Got a showman on our hands. All right. I'll calmly walk up to the, the ring. 
and slide my way in and stare him down. Staring contest. Are you trying to intimidate him? Fuck yeah, I am. Strength and intimidation. Yeah. Plus hunger. Definitely have the hunger dice in the pool. Place your bets, everyone. Final bets. Three successes. One success. Hmm. He doesn't seem impressed. No more bets. Kalita, did you place a wager? No, I usually don't bet on sports. It's more, stock market's more my thing. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Lame. Coco, have you placed a wager? I have not, but I did try to lock eyes with the uh, fellow that's on Kalita's arm. He returns your stare. What are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm great. We should chat. I'm right here. Away from people. Uh, we gotta fight. Maybe after. Fine. Name's Mario. Coco. Coco? Mm-hmm. What, like the puffs? No, like the perfume. Coco perfume? Chanel? Weird. I've placed a thousand on my friend. And brave choice. Brave choice. He'll win. Hmm, well, the odds are against him, so you stand to make, ha <laughs> pardon me, a killing. <laughs> and I settle in next to Lizzie. Hi. Hey. I don't like the fights. I think it could be fun. But Airbox is my friend, so I'm here for him. Bron's my friend, and I'm here for him. I understand that. Are you going to text me or not do that? No. Probably not. Meanwhile, in the pit. Yeah. The kid are getting excited again. All Make right. your move, take your shot. Uh, first, I'm gonna activate that blood surge. I can feel it. Make a rouse check. Mm -hmm. You will do the same. I fail. Hmm. Unfortunate. What's the total of your composure and awareness? My composure to do and awareness. Four. Hmm. It's interesting. You both have exactly the same. So, he charges you. <gasps> What's your response? Dodge uh, or fight? Uh, block. Block. Are you intending to fight like a pugilist? With fists and movement of the feet and blows? Or are you going at it more directly? I think I'm gauging the situation first. He's coming at me. My intention is to block and see how he's fighting and find a weak point to take out. He has very little finesse, just like he showed the previous night yeah. at the art gallery. It's all haymakers and bludgeons, but he's very, very strong. <sighs> Stronger than you. Strength and brawl? Yeah. Uh, actually, if you are intending to block, let's make it dexterity and athletics. Okay. The blows come in furiously, one after another. He's trying to connect, trying to take you down in one huge haymaker swing. Three. Three, four successes. The blow comes in. <clears throat> Fortunately, of course, it's just superficial damage, but it is two points. Ooh. <clears throat> Give up. No, and then at that moment when he scores a hit, that's when I want to take advantage and strike back. Okay, so go ahead, strength and brawl. Yeah. I'll see if he can twist away from you. Three, four successes. Three, four, five. Five successes. Six, six, six. Six successes, okay, so margin is two. You give as good as you get. You come in low, jab him in the ribs a few mm. times, have the satisfaction of feeling some bones crack under the power Fuck of yeah. fists. <clears throat> he just grunts. His response 
is to throw himself against the side of the pit, grab the railing, and lash out in a kick. I'm going to soaring leap up. Ooh. You don't need to make a roll. But he does. Hmm. He wasn't expecting that. He can't keep his balance. Dodging is one thing, but moving straight up off the ground, he completely miscalculates and overextends, loses his grip on the railing, and goes down hard on the floor of the pit. There's a collective groan of disappointment from all the kindred who have bet on him, and suddenly they begin to question the wisdom of their wager. Slowly, in the air, I aim down for a dive bomb, baby. Hmm. Gonna have to aim, and you're gonna have to hit him. Yeah. Let's make it... Dexterity and athletics again. He will attempt to twist out of the way, but because he was off balance and at a significant disadvantage, I'm going to take two dice out of his pool. Only two successes. Four successes. Four successes. Slam down onto his body with the strength of your fall, and your knees connect with his chest. He grunts again in pain, takes more damage. This yeah. is not going as he expected. And it's my turn. Since we've got him here, I'm gonna grapple him. Okay, strength and brawl. Yes, I'd like to use my specialty and <laughs> grapple. You may use the specialty and grapple. Add an extra die. Seven. Seven. Ooh. He's got more dice in his pool now. But I don't think he's going to get seven off this. Oh, he does get seven. So the tie goes to the active kindred. Yeah. So now you're grappled together on the floor of the pit. Mm. You've got about one round before he breaks free. All right. You can feel his fangs slide up alongside the muscle of your arm and sink into your bicep. Oh, we're playing that game now, are we? Take a point of aggravated damage. It burns. <clears throat> it's awful. He begins to tear away a chunk of undead muscle with a jerk of his head. <sighs> I but told you I'd kill you. His neck is exposed. I'm going to bite. You're gonna go lunge forward with your fang. Yeah! Ooh. So, this is going to be all out. Go ahead and roll. Strength and brawl. The crowd is on its feet. They can smell the vitae in the air. Richter's on his feet too. It's exciting. We love it when it gets rough. What's that? Six successes. Six successes. He has got a critical success, but it only totals five. So you sink your fangs into his throat. Are you biting as hard as you can? Is this, Fuck yeah. is this as hard as you can do it? Yes! Two aggravated damage. He shouts in pain. Lizzie looks horrified. Oh my god, this is gonna kill him. Are they gonna kill each other? It'll be fine. How do you know? Bron has control. I don't have a whole lot of control right now. I'm just, as soon as I get free of this uh, grip, I'm gonna start wailing on his face. He does something completely unexpected. He gets his hands onto your shoulders and you can feel long, sharp talons dig into your flesh. Uh, it's excruciatingly painful. Uh, Four superficial points of damage. Uh, How many unmarked health boxes do you have? I just passed into one egg. Okay. You know what happens if your entire health track fills with aggravated damage? You will go into torpor. Yeah. He too is sporting those terribly long, ferocious claws that you saw on the kindred who fought first. Surprise! Come on. 
Yeah. Fighting fucking dirty. Like there's some other way. He charges at you again. Fight or, or move. I'm going to use his inertia to fling him against the wall behind me. Okay. Let's make that strength and athletics. Ooh, not so good. Three successes. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six successes. Margin of three. You sidestep, put your hands exactly where they need to be. He slams into the wall of the pit headlong. Oof. Seems to stagger him. He seems stunned. I'm going to give you a free attack while he's getting his bearings. Yeah. From Crowd behind. is wild. Super impressed and also dismayed that they feel like they're going to lose a lot of money. I'm going to jump on top of his back like a backpack and sink my teeth into his other side of his neck. Mm. Strength and brawl. Yeah. And may I use my grappling specialty? Add the dice. Isn't this incredible? I love it when it gets rough. Does this happen every night? Nah, this is better than most. Is it? Your friend's quite a fighter. He is. What do you think, Miss Coco? Absolutely. That's why we have him on our team. Mm. Smart move. Maybe he'd like to change teams. Five. Five successes? Okay. You sink your fangs in his neck again. You inflict Two more points of aggravated damage. His head throws back in a terrible grimace of agony just as he speeds up with you on his back and slams you against the pit wall. <sighs> Two superficial points of damage. How many boxes do you have left? Three left. Hmm. You are nearing the edge of consciousness, but so it seems is he. He staggers, puts his hand to his neck. So, that's how it is. I should have killed you back in the city. You can try. And uh, I'll use rapid reflexes to grab my silver knuckle dusters. And suddenly we all got claws. Dip into your pockets and slip them on. And then I will attack the two weak points on the neck that I have uh, weakened with my fangs. Digging in with the metal implements. Let's call that hmm, a called shot. Yeah. You're going to subtract two successes from the attack because you're trying to hit a specific place. But if you do, I'll allow additional damage because you're beating on his wounds. Yeah. At this point, he's just trying to defend himself and stay away from out of your reach. You get the impression from the expression on his face that he doesn't find himself in this situation very often. Mm. Strength and brawl. Strength and brawl again. I yell from the stance. Finish him! Finish him, Braun! It's hard to tell who the crowd is rooting for, too. They're so caught up in the violence of it and the power of the display, they might be okay if Braun wins. Five successes. It's a total four, but down to three, right? Do you want to spend any willpower to reroll anything? Yes, I would! Up to three. Up to three regular dice. Five. Still four. Hmm. He tags you as you pass, jabbing his feral claws along your stomach <clears throat> and up <clears throat> for another point of aggravated damage. Excuse aggravated? Me. Sorry, a point of superficial damage. Yeah. But you land the blows exactly where you wanted, on either side of his neck, hitting those gaping wounds that you left with your fangs. For a moment, it looks like he's going to take your face off with his claws. <laughs> and then he slowly sinks to his knees, and as the crowd erupts in a colossal cheer of appreciation for this display, his eyelids close, and he sinks into torpor. <sighs> Damn! That's my boy. I'm impressed. 
<laughs> My compliments to your sire. He knows how to pick them. I'll pass along the message. Bravo! The crowd is applauding. Even though they have lost money, they are so impressed with what they have seen that they can't help but cheer for you. <sighs> Lizzie has left the box and has lowered herself into the pit. She's gone over to Braun and is cradling his head. Oh, sorry, he'll be, he'll be okay. We'll wake him up. I know he wanted to kill you, but he couldn't do it. So I'll do it for him. What do you mean? She doesn't say anything else. She just cradles his head protectively. This was supposed to be a fair fight. Well, you're entitled to a significant amount of money. Oh, me? purse. Yeah, here we go. He hands you over a fat stack of bills. Yeah. You, of course, get back the odds on your wager. It's a handsome profit. The crowd begins to disperse. The excitement is over. You get a lot of hands clapping you on the back. Oh, not some, too hard. Uh, some, some claws as well. Not oh. everybody is, is, is that well-mannered. A lot of congratulations. Great fight. Can't wait for your next one. Yeah. Reigning champion. You gotta come back. Maybe in a bit. God, I can't believe I bet against this guy. Crap. I am out so much money. And soon, the arena is empty. Except for you. And Richter. And Mario. Other kindred have helped Lizzie take her box away someplace. Well, well, well. Who knew? Congratulations. I knew, but thank you. Holy shit, bro. Thanks. So what do I gotta do to get you on my team? <laughs> I gotta say, it does look pretty appealing. I mean, this Anarch life, it- Not too bad, huh? It might fit someone like me. Yeah, and I, I saw you enjoying yourself. In the cage, too. See? Not so bad over here. I realize it ain't your cup of tea. Or yours, Miss Coco. But hey, don't I, get it what twisted. What I do to you? You object? The only thing I object to is if you have such a prize fighter, why aren't you trying to help him heal? He'll be taken care of. When? Soon. He just needs a hit of the right vitae. Mm. We'll take care of our own. He'll heal up. And he's learned a valuable lesson. Which is? Don't fuck with me. Well, that's not Good the lesson, lesson I was thinking of, but there's always someone tougher than yourself. Hmm. Hmm. So, do you enjoy your time with us? It's been a lovely evening. Sorry we didn't get that dance. Maybe next time. I hope so. Me too. But uh, things are heating up, and uh, I'm going to go pay a call on would-be Baron Torque. Oh. We're gonna have a little sit-down chat, apparently. Are you? It's what I hear. So you ruffled your feathers? I think the other way around. Oh. Ooh. Even better. No, I'm scared. Can you tell? You know what that is? Controlled fear. Mm. Oh. Restraint. Well, enjoy your winnings. Come Thanks. back anytime. You know where to find us. Mm. We're always open. After dark. We'll take you up on that. You can show yourselves out when you're ready. Very cool. Very good. Very good. Khalid, I need to go. I need a nap. I need some blood. I need to go. Right. I hurt so much. Yeah, we need to. Yeah. I know a place where you can go and take care of yourself real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah please. Yeah. I turn to Mario and I say, this conversation's going to have to wait. Well, you heard Richter. You know where to find us? Are always open after sundown. I look forward to it. Yeah, me too. Come on back. Mm. And I'm and, gonna. Uh, Richter ain't the only one who dances, you know. Interesting. I'm gonna uh, pick up Braun with my as much strength as I've got, 
pick him up and I'm gonna um, take him down to um, where I met Simone. Is everyone else accompanying you? Yes. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I need to be carried, but I appreciate it. And I'm like patting him on the shoulder. <laughs> Good job. Ooh, Ooh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's a short trip from the pit to the door with the red paper tag on the handle. The vampire that introduced herself to you as Simone is not here, but there are people here, mortals. And they look very pleased to see you all. <gasps> oh, finally. Somebody offers you a wrist, another, another offers you a shoulder. Give me. You can drink your fill. And I do. And it's so nice. It's warm. Mm -hmm. It is nice. It's life. Yeah. Unlife. Yeah. Immortality. It's sweet. Almost as sweet as victory. <laughs> How many hunger dice do you want to remove? Two. So you take a little from several people. Is anyone else enjoying themselves? Not my scene. Too warm. No, but I touch shoulders and heads and arms. They seem to appreciate the sensation. You are so glittery. Johnny thinks we're good. Well, now you have seen how the other half on lives. Mission accomplished. Lizzie is returned to her coterie back in the Bronx. You have seen the pit and you have prevailed. Are you suffering from any willpower damage? No, I just won, but... Erase it. Oh. The sweet taste of victory restores the spent willpower. Oh. You are at the peak of pride and confidence. You've learned some interesting things and met some interesting kindred, but now it's time to return to your part of the Big Apple. So this is an excellent place, it seems, to end our vampire story for now. <laughs>